Hello everyone, welcome to Code and Learn. In this video, we are going to talk about gRPC, health checking, and health server. Along with that, we will also look at service configs that can be used with the gRPC client. You will see how health server and health checking is related to the service config on the client side. So let's get started. So the gRPC framework specifies a standard service API called health v1 which is a proto definition for a health server that can be used by the client to perform health checks against the grpc server let's have a look at this proto file so let's scroll down to the service as you can see in the health server or the health service there are three methods the first method can be used by the client to check the health of a service or a grpc service the next is the list method that can be used by the client to list the health of all the available services running on the gRPC server. Keep in mind that there could be multiple services running on one gRPC server. That is, you could have multiple service proto definition and that could be implemented through one gRPC server. The third method we have is the watch method. Through this, the client can actively subscribe to health of a service. So as soon as the health changes, for a service, the client will be notified. So coming back to the health service documentation, you can see the check RPC endpoint is a unary call used to get a health status of a service. Then we have a watch RPC endpoint, which is a streaming RPC that can be used to keep an eye on health of a gRPC service or to listen to the health of a gRPC service. We don't need to implement these services in our code because the Go package for gRPC provides the implementation of the health service and enables us to create a health server. We will see that we can use not serving or serving to indicate the health of the gRPC service. So let's go to the code. We will go into the cmd server main.go. I'm just going to close the terminal. You have seen that we already registered a health server created through the gRPC framework. This is basically how you do that. We first created a new server and then registered the server through our main gRPC server. Now on this health server, we have methods such as check and watch. We also have shutdown and resume and the method I'm interested in is set service status. With this method, you can use the service name like this and then set the status of the service. That is, if my service is unhealthy, I can do health v1 not serving. So this will indicate to the client that this service is not in a healthy mode. Once it's healthy, I can do the same thing again, but this time I can set it to serving, which means our service has recovered and is now able to serve request. This is only needed if you want to manually control the health of the service or the health status of the service. Internally, what happens is when we register the health service, it will be setting the status of this service to serving so that gRPC clients can connect to it and fetch the data. Let us look at the gRPC framework example to get a sense of how this is done. So here, if you look at the code, we first register the health check or the health server and then we start a new go routine to actively check for the health of our service after some delay and then accordingly set the status that is if the service is not healthy we set it so that is the way you can manually set the health of a service again in our application we don't need to do that because we don't have any external dependency like a database but if you were to have a database, what you can do is start a new Go routine, check database health. That would check the database health at an interval, let us say one second interval. And based on the health of the database, we can actually set the health service or health server status. So that is basically how you would use health checks. Another thing to keep in mind is, since we are only implementing one service through this gRPC server, when we do health server dot set status, we can specify an empty string to indicate that this is the health status for all the services that this gRPC server offers. But if you were offering multiple services, you could use the service name to set the status for that particular service. Now you may be wondering where to get the service name. If we go under API, where we are generating the gRPC code in the service underscore gRPC dot pb dot co, you will find the service name that is newsv1 dot new service. And these are all the methods. 
So this is the full method name for all the methods. Now let us look at gracefully shutting down our gRPC server. For that, I'm going to use error group. So let me import it into our project. So it's colan.org x slash sync error group. If we look at the documentation, you will see package error group provides a synchronization and error propagation along with context cancellation for groups of coroutine working on subtask of a common task. That is exactly what we need. So here, I'm going to create two coroutines using the error group. The first coroutine is going to serve the listener and the second coroutine is going to listen for any cancellation signals that we will use to shut down our server gracefully. First, let me create the error group. Error group with context. For context, I'm just going to use context.background. Using that group, let us create the first coroutine to serve and listen. grpc.go pass in the closure. Here, first thing I'm going to do is create a def statement to catch any panics. So just doing a simple defer function. If R call recover, if we recover from a panic and R is not is equal to nil, we will set error is equal to FMT error F and say panic and passing in the error. Here, I'm going to use a name return value. So I will just say error and close it into parentheses. So this will be initialized to a nil value, but if we recover from a panic, this value will be set to the error return from FMT error F. Then let's move the listener code down here. Also need to move the listener. So instead of failing, we will just set it to error. So I will just say error is equal to FMT error F and that's it. Similar here, error is equal to FMT error F. Sorry, this needs to go outside the defer function, which we are using to get the panic. And in the end, we will just return the error. So if you remember with error groups, if I'm creating two or three coroutines using the group, if one of them returns the error, the other two will be shut down automatically. So let us create the second one. For that, I'm going to do grp go, again the function or the closure. Similar thing, I'm going to catch a panic. So I'm just going to copy this from here. Let's scroll down. After that, what we are going to do is intercept any signals. For intercepting signals, let us create a function. func intercept signals, accept a context, context.context. .context. Inside it, initialize a signal channel, make channel of os.signal, make it a buffer channel of 1. Now let's register for signals. We need to import the signal package from os. Let's do that up here os slash signal then signal dot notify specify the channel and then the signals we want to listen for we are going to listen for syscall dot sigint syscall dot sig term and syscall sig quit so if we get any of these three signals we want to quit our application then let us create a select statement to listen for signal the first case is if context is done in that case we want to return then we will have signal listen for signals on the 6c channel if we get any signal we want to log that we have intercepted a signal here i will just say signal dot signal or sig dot string and then just return so those are our two cases now we are going to use them here so i will say intercept signal provide the group context so this coroutine will block here until we get context cancellation or we get a signal from OS to shut down. If we get a signal, we are just going to do health server dot shutdown, which will set all the service statuses to not serving so that our client is aware that service health is not healthy. After that, we are also going to shut down our server. For that, I am also going to create a new function called shutdown func shutdown. Similar to what we did earlier, we are going to accept a context and the server that we want to shut down. For that, I will just say grpc.server and return a error. So error, use a name return value. First, I'm going to create a done channel. Next, I'm going to start a go routine that is going to try and shut down the server gracefully. Graceful stop. Once done, we will close the done channel. Next, let us create a select statement to listen for first when the done channel is closed and the other one when the context is done if context was cancelled that is we are forcefully shutting down the grpc server grpc server 
forcefully or forcibly shut down and use the context.error to get the error and then do serve.stop in the end we are just going to return the error we have already initialized the error so i need to remove this and that should do it so here we will just do shutdown or return the value from shutdown group context and pass in the serve and that's it let us import all the packages open the terminal and run go mod tidy clear the console packages are imported but it's complaining about the listener this is because we are not using it we created another one inside the first go routine so we can remove it save it to make the linter happy i'm just going to rename it to listen error and that should make it happy now let's try to run the server and then shut it down go run cmd slash server main dot go that should be running now let's shut it down okay one thing we forgot to do is wait for the go routines that we started using the error group so what we need to do is if error is equal to group dot wait error not is equal to nil will log the error so log dot fatal server shut down and just log the error and that's it now let's try to run the server again try to shut it down and as you can see we have intercepted a signal and shut down so that's all well and good with the health server now how can we use it we are going to use the service config with the client so as you can see the service config specifies how grpc clients should behave when interacting with the grpc server it can do a bunch of things like load balancing call behavior health checking name resolution and other things you can also specify timeouts along with retry mechanism which are inbuilt into the client now let's do the same thing so we are just going to create a raw json here for that i'm just going to declare a constant called service config let's create a multi-line string for load balancing we are going to use round robin load balancing so i can do something like this so what will happen is if more than one instances of your grpc servers are running which is very common for production system with round robin load balancing the client will distribute the request across three instances in a round robin fashion if health of one of the services down then it will remove it from the pack and the other two will be used to send the request in a round robin fashion so that is basically how we are using the load balancing config along with the health server another thing you can do is specify a method config that is you can tell the client for this method you want to use the following configurations so it is a array and in the array we can specify the method config let me write it down and explain it later so here i have defined the method config here i am saying that for method get on the service news dot v1 dot new service which is what we have here as the service name i want to use the following config for retry policy i want to use a exponential back off so these are the configuration for the exponential back off and I want to retry on statuses internal that is internal server error and if services available then I specify a timeout so if a timeout is reached I want the client to throw an error then in the end we have wait for ready that is I want the service to be ready before trying to contact it so how you can specify this to the client is via the client options or the dial options I can say grpc with service config or with default service config which takes a string and we are going to use service config as the string and that's it now let's open the terminal let's run the server here and then let's try to make a call to the server and as you can see it's working so our service config here is valid if we go to the documentation and look at the proto definition for the service config you can see different values that you can specify wait for ready that we use timeout retry policy and stuff like that you can read through the documentation to get a better sense of service config so to revise what we did in this lesson was use the group context or error groups to create two go routines in one of the coroutine we are starting our server and in the other one we intercept the signals and if we intercept the signal first thing we do is we shut down the health server so that any client that is going to contact our server while we are shutting down should not send the request and then we shut down the server 
using the graceful stop. Then on the client side, we are using service config that will now depend on the health server we specified on the server side to perform various operations like load balancing and retries. And then we use that service config by providing the dial option to the client. So that is basically how service configs work with the health server in conjunction to do load balancing and retries and other stuff. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please post a comment under the video or reach out to our Discord server. Until next time, happy coding.